Hello, my name is Kevin. I run developer relations here at Directus and today I have the pleasure of telling you what's new in the recently released Directus version 10.7. Content versioning. Content versioning is now available in the Directus editor and this feature was actually built with you, our community. We opened it up to preview a few months ago and then based on all your feedback, we were able to adjust it ahead of release. Now, content versioning unlocks some really powerful authoring workflows. Firstly, the ability to prepare content and updates to content before publishing it. And secondly, the ability to collaborate with others without accidentally overwriting content. Now, you enable content versioning on a collection and then inside of the item, you can go ahead and create new content versions. Every item has its own content versions. You can go ahead and make the changes you want. And when you're ready, you can promote some or all fields into the main version, which generally in most use cases will then go ahead and publish the content. Now there's an API for managing content versions and new events which are emitted, uh, which you can then use inside of Directus Automate. So that's content versioning. Next is the theming engine. Before Directus 10.7, we allowed you to add custom CSS to the Directus Data Studio to make it feel more your own. Well, in Directus 10.7, we're not getting rid of that, but we are additionally adding a new theming engine. This allows you to configure a bunch of variables to make Directus more themed appropriate to your organization or project. And then you can leave the mapping of those values to the actual markup to us. And that means if we ever change the markup, uh, we will also make sure that these variables are respected. So you can be more confident in your custom theming. What we have today are just a few variables, uh, but we are constantly adding more as we release new patch and minor releases of Directus. Updates to Directus Insights. There have been loads of updates to Directus Insights. Firstly, new style notation and unit options in quite a few of our panels, so you can customize the way they look and feel. We have multi-line series charts, so you can plot data from multiple collections inside of one panel, which will allow you to hopefully understand a little more the relationship between your various data sets. There is a new metric list panel available, which is well suited for things like seeing the top selling products perhaps in the last quarter. There's some new administration options like duplicating, bulk actions, and exporting and importing dashboards. And finally, a new panel selection UI, which allow you to better illustrate what each of the panels do. And this extends to custom panels as well. There's a ton more inside of Directus 10.7, but do check out the updates to Directus Insights. Secure extensions. Okay, okay, we've been talking about the Directus marketplace for years, but what's really important is that we set the correct foundations that we can be confident on for years to come. Part of that is the secure extensions framework. And this is a way of building highly sandboxed extensions, which have to request additional scopes, additional permissions in order to do things like external web requests and talking to data in your collections. So as part of Directus 10.7, we're shipping the secure extensions framework, which we'll continue to build upon. And this will be really important. You'll be hearing a lot more about it as we march towards working on and releasing a marketplace. Community contributions. This is the section where we thank all of the lovely community members who have contributed since the Directus 10.6.0 release. Let's start with the new features and improvements. Thank you to Dominic for making the V button component a little more flexible by adding a target prop for when you're adding external links. Thank you to Gerard for adding auto detection of delimiters for CSV imports and in turn allowing for the use of other delimiters uh, instead of just a comma. Thank you to Rob for adding cache clear as a method to the utils service. And thank you to Bram for making API errors available through the Directus errors package. Now let's talk about the bug fixes and optimizations. 
Thank you to the team at Git Start for enhancing the functionality of our checkboxes tree interface with accent sensitive search. Thank you to Christian for contributing an optimization, which otherwise was creating the app, the director's data studio, to sometimes throw errors when the user had a slow internet connection, changing the order of operations during startup. Thank you to Diego for exposing the auth create and auth update filter events to flows. Thank you to Stanislaw for two contributions, one which fixed the rendering of the user popover for users without a role, and the other which fixed updating the file name and file extension when you replace an asset in Directus files. Thank you to Jean-Baptiste for fixing the loading of JSON and YAML configuration files, and Donald for adding the ability to replace files from within the item details drawer. Thank you to MSC BPI for fixing range requests when using the Azure storage driver, and Leo for fixing an issue that would prevent the filter object from functioning in certain WebSocket subscriptions. And finally, thanks to Zahir for making the transformation argument of the asset service get asset method optional. Before now, it wasn't optional, so thank you for that. And finally, to documentation. Firstly, thank you to Ched, and Tom for fixing broken links and typos in our documentation. And thank you to Andre for adding a Google SAML example to our documentation. Everything we've spoken about today in terms of new features in Directus 10.7 were released as part of our very first leap week, which was a week of announcements. That means that every single one of these features already has videos, documentation and announcement posts. So if you want to learn more, head to the Directors blog. Directors 10.7 is now available on NPM and Docker Hub. So please do try it out and let us know what you think. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you in the next release.